I'll say it again. I don't know who you're talking about. It's official. The fucking wasteland just outright hates me. It has to. Why else would I be stuck out here alone, sick as fuck, and stuck in a rainstorm? My head was swimming, my stomach was churning. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. My body wouldn't stop tingling. It's like tiny little bugs were crawling right under my skin. According to my pit buck, I was suffering from acute radiation poisoning. No surprise, I guess, after that damn stable exploded and basked me in radiation. That would be something you'd think should be easy to fix with some Radaway. But I remember I gave them all to Aura when we were still in the stable. And the one I found in Gator's office wasn't much help either. I had her stuff with me, but some pony stole them out of her bags before I got them back. Luckily, her energy spear was still there. It unscrewed into three parts, making it easy enough to fit in my bags. I was surprised the fiends hadn't stolen that too. Now I get to slowly walk back towards Hidden Sands, feeling like shit. Oh, and to top it all off, the rain was getting worse. It was like the Wasteland was yelling at me to take a shower. Oh yeah? Well, fuck you, Wasteland, I don't give a shit. I'll show you. At least the rain was slowly cleaning the dried blood from the stable off my duster. It felt horrible. Every so often, I had to stop and dry heave. The churning in my stomach was gradually getting worse as I tried not to soil myself. However, eventually, nature took its course. Thank the goddesses it was raining. I don't know how much longer I could go on. Every muscle in my body ached like they'd been taken and hit repeatedly with a meat tenderizer. Even worse is that even through the rain, it was cold, I still felt very hot. Every breath felt like hot steam as it escaped my muzzle. I stopped walking and sat down, wiping my wet mane out of my eyes so I could look down at my Pip Buck's map. I still had a ways to go, it seemed, and the night was still young. I looked around at the dilapidated buildings. Most were shells that didn't look like a good place to rest. One, however, was a large building right at the edge of the cluster of buildings that looked like it had held up nicely. Getting back to my hooves, I walked closer to it. There was a sign over the door which read, FNF Tool Company Headquarters and Museum. Pulling out my shotgun, I walked up to the door and turned the knob, pushing the door open. So far, so good. No pony was shooting at me as I walked in. I shut the door behind me, making it so dark I couldn't see my own hoof in front of my face. I checked my EFS. There were a couple of red bars, but from the skittering noises coming from that direction, I was sure they were just a couple of rat roaches. I turned my pip light on, illuminating the room in a soft glow. I saw a white line on my EFS, even my shotgun raised. I said loudly, is any pony here? The white line started to move, and a metallic voice echoed out from the other room. Be right with you, ma'am. I do apologize for the inconvenience. Something flashed in the open door and then vanished on the other side. A moment later, I heard something buzzing, followed by a high-pitched squeak. Then the red marks vanished. The white mark on my EFS started moving again. A moment later, a robot floated through the door. It had three spider-like appendages, three eye things coming out of its round body, and a glowing talisman under its body keeping it afloat. Terribly sorry, ma'am. We have a bit of an insect problem. And with so little help nowadays, they tend to slip by me from time to time. I take it you're here for the tour. It said with an accent I hadn't heard before. I lowered my shotgun. Um, no. It was storming outside. I was just looking for shelter. The floating robot's legs or arms, whatever they are, drooped as if it were sad. I see. Seems like no one ever comes for the tours anymore. I'm sorry? It's okay, ma'am. It's been 200 years and not a single pony has stopped by for the museum tour here. I didn't think a robot could sound sad, but this thing really did sound like it was. Nobody's been here since the mega spells went off? Well, ma'am, not any pony of notice. There have been ruffians now and again, 
but this Mr. Handy still has a little spunk left in its old bolts. I've kept this place safe for many years now, in case some pony wanted to come in and take the tour. I looked at its metal arms. One had what looked like claws, the other had what looked like the end to a magical energy pistol, and the last had a large buzzsaw. I could see a couple holes in its metal body, and some scorch marks on its finish. Seems like you did a good job. My name's Shadowstar. I hope you don't mind me staying here till the storm passes. The robot looked like its mood brightened up as it floated a little higher. Not at all, ma'am. That is, as long as you put that shotgun away. FNF tools doesn't allow firearms past the main entry. I didn't see a reason to worry, so I did. Thank you, Miss Shadowstar. If you'd like, the master's office has a cot in it that you may find rather comfortable. The robot, I gave a smile. I'd like that. And something to eat if you have it. I doubt I'll be able to keep it down, but I should still try to get something in my stomach. He hovered over to one of the counters and picked up a pre-war box of cereal with the words Sugar Apple Bombs on it. He brought it over to me. This is all I have, I'm afraid. The rest of the food in the kitchen spoiled over the years. I grabbed it, pulling open the box, and took a bite. Then another, and another. This had to be the best thing I've ever eaten in the wasteland. Not like it was hard to do, but still, it was just awesome. It also made me feel a lot better than when I had first walked in. But for some reason, I didn't feel like I was going to barf it back up a few minutes later. After a moment went by, I looked up at the robot, belched, and smiled. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's just been a while since I've had anything good to eat. No trouble at all, ma'am. It's just nice to see some pony here that isn't trying to attack me. I'll destroy the building. Master Falafel used to love these sugar apple bombs, too. He used to make sure there was always a box under the counter in front and in his office for when he would come and visit, he said proudly. I yawned and smiled up at him. He had good taste, then. That he did. You look tired. Follow me, I'll show you to the master's office, he said, floating off towards the staircase behind the counter. I followed close behind. The room he took me to was down the hall on the second floor. There was a set of double doors. The robot folded over and pulled on the handle. Bollocks! The door is locked! When's the last time you were up here? I asked, walking close to the door. Not since I saw the Masters. And when was that? Two hundred years ago, the day before the Mega Spells went off. I take it you don't have a key either, do you? Unfortunately, no, ma'am. I guess we'll have to find you a new place to sleep. Nah, it's okay, I have my own key. I pulled out my trusty screwdriver and bobby pin. I went to work. My magic still was crap, but I could handle this. In a matter of minutes, the lock gave a click and opened. I pulled on the handle and opened the door. Aha! That's a nifty trick now, isn't it? The robot said, bobbing up and down. Well, I'll let you get settled in. I'm going back down to the lobby to keep guard. Thank you. Um, I didn't catch your name. My apologies, ma'am. My ID number is 85967, but Falafel and Flapjack called me Watts. Thanks again, Watts. I really appreciate the kindness. It's rare in the wasteland. Watts bobbed up and down again. You're welcome, Miss Shadowstar. Rest well. And with that, he left, shutting the doors behind him. I looked around the office. It was well preserved. There were at least an inch of dust on just about everything. The walls were cracked, the paint peeling, and a musty smell lingered. Apart from that, it looked good compared to the other places I've seen so far. I walked over to the large desk, sat down, and looked at the terminal. A soft green glow was coming from under the desk. I wiped off the screen as best I could and checked it. And of course, it was locked. With a loud sigh, I leaned back in the chair and closed my eyes. After a moment went by, I looked back at the terminal and tried hacking it. After ten minutes and several tries, the terminal finally beeped, and I was in. The password was Sweet Lily. I smiled at my accomplishment as the little filly in my head bounced up and down with excitement. I started looking through the files. 
A good amount of them were about the business. Numbers of income, overhead, employee payouts, spreadsheets, profit margins, test projects. Towards the bottom, one caught my eye. So I clicked on it and started to read. Dear Flapjack, Brother, I'm sorry to send you this message with everything else going on. I hope your time in Manhattan starts to get better. I know working with the Ministry Mayors can be hard. But give it more time, and I'm sure an Applejack will come around. In response to your last message about my meeting with Captain Nightstalker, I've already told you there isn't anything you need to worry about. This new project that I'm working on has nothing to do with my meeting with him. The Ministry of Awesome just wanted to see about adding a hub to the upper floors. I know you think the project is a waste of money, but just think about how much we can make when it's completed next week. Just have faith in everything. I'll haven't let you down yet, brother, and you know I never will. As for your concern about the MOM, I've heard Lemon Zest. She was able to tell me that there will be some pony uh, will be stopping by to talk with us. Don't worry, though. The memory of my meeting with Night Stalker was already removed. They won't be able to find anything out from me. So you don't need to worry. I hope you're doing well, and I hope everything goes well with the Ministry of Wartime Technology. Sincerely, Falafel. P.S. I look forward to your visit next week. I hope you and Lily are doing well. Can't wait to see you both. That was a really stupid thing to do. If you wanted to hide something from the Ministry of Morale, why would you send a message like that and not get rid of it? Maybe he just wasn't a smart pony. The rest of the files on the terminal didn't look important. I skipped by them and went to the last thing on the terminal. Safe control. I looked behind me and saw a safe. Going back to the terminal, I clicked the safe control and unlocked it. The safe clicked and I walked over and opened it. Inside was a few bags of pre-war bits, 44 caliber ammo, paper documents, 8 caps, why the fuck were there bottle caps in the safe? And a slender box. I put the useful items into my saddlebags and picked up the box to look it over. It wasn't very unique, only a small black box with a silver latch. Curiously, taking over, I flipped the latch and opened it. Inside were two memory orbs. One looked normal, giving off a light silvery gleam. The other, however, had a black glow with a light silver glow on the outer edge. Now, I'm not an expert on memory orbs, but I wasn't sure that it was safe to go into that one. Holding the box in my magic, I walked over to the cot that was set up against the wall. Dusting it off quickly, I laid myself down on it and looked at the box. I wanted so badly to know what was in that orb. I mean, it's safe here, now, right? I should be okay. I closed the box and set it down on the floor next to my saddlebags. No, I don't need to do that right now. I reached over and dug through my own saddlebags. Taking out the other recording, I found in Stable 9. I popped it into my pit buck, hoping whatever was on it would distract me from the tempting memory orbs. So I hit play. Hello, Overmare of Stable 9. I'm Scootaloo, Vice President of Stable Tech, and President of Red Racer. I'd like to welcome you to Stable 9. As you should know from the Overmare's manual, you were given when you first entered, you'll know that your stable was made with one thing in mind. Keeping animals that are crucial to the ecosystem safe in the event of a mega spell detonation. If you're listening to this, I guess that happened. And it probably means... Fuck, I don't want to think about that. Her voice was plagued with melancholy as she spoke. Anyway, Stable 9 was set up to be a safe refuge for ponies and animals alike. And that's what it'll look like, at least for most of the stable. This next part is only for the ears of the Overmare and the heads of your two other departments. Stable 9 has another purpose. You should have a list of every animal that's been transported to the stable. It should be sorted in alphabetical order by species. All of them have their traits that are essential to the ecosystem, from the small vampire fruit bat to the large ferocious manticore. The mission for you and your other two leaders of Stable 9 is to experiment with the animals and find a new way to use their traits for the betterment of equinity. Due to the nature of your work, you'll have to communicate regularly with the head of security and head of bioresearch. All three of you will be given a new model pit buck from Stable Tech that will hopefully have finished by the time that you need it. The Pip Buck 3000 Mark II will look a lot like your standard Pip Buck, 
but with a few extra goodies. Scootaloo's voice stopped for a moment there. Then she spoke again, sounding as if she was talking away from the quarter. Do I really have to call him goodies, Apple Bloom? A northern voice echoed on the recorder. It was distant, but I could hear a slight accent when she spoke. Of course you do! I put a lot of work into those! But it sounds stupid. Who cares anyway? Goodaloo said again. You know what? Fine. Whatever. And no, I'm not redoing the recording. I have over a hundred more to do, and I don't want to keep redoing them. She cleared her throat, then spoke in her professional voice again. So yeah, a few extra things that the rest of the pip bucks don't have. Also, once put on, you can't get them off. Not without the help of a specialized pip buck technician. Or, well, uh, death. You should look at the manual. Anyway, so yeah, that's the mission you have for your stable. Good luck, and just do better than we did. Apple Bloom, I'm taking a break. Make Sweetie Belle do the next one. With that, the recording ended. So it wasn't just Cell who was fucked up in that place. It was the whole damn stable. I said to myself as I laid back on the cot, looking up at the cracked ceiling. Ugh, what do I do now? I was hoping the recording would keep my mind off the memory orbs, but all it did was depress me. Looking back down at the box, I started to wonder again. What could be in them? I lifted the box with my magic again and pulled the silver one out. I looked back towards the door, then at the orb. Okay, I can't take it anymore. Getting up, I walked over to the door and locked it. Then went back to the cot. That door stayed locked for 200 years. I'm sure it can last a few more minutes while I dive into the orb. Laying back down, I took the orb and touched it to my glowing horn. The world melted away. Okay, so thankfully this time I was in a mare. I really didn't like the feeling of being a stallion. My host was a unicorn. She fit me rather well. She was walking through what looked like the front office of FNF Tools, only a lot nicer. She had a little sway to her hips, and she was humming a little tune as she put things away behind the desk. The door opened behind my host. She turned and in walked an earth pony stallion. The green-coated stallion shook his head, droplets of water flying off his straw-colored mane. He looked over at my host and smiled. Good morning, sweet lily. Didn't expect you to be here so early. My host smiled wide and spoke in a sweet voice. Good morning, Falafel. I thought you were coming in around noon. A smile lit up his face. He made his way over to the counter setting down the hat he was wearing. I have a meeting later. I wanted to get in good and early today and get some work done so that I don't get backed up after the meeting. Why are you here so early? Is my brother in? She giggled cutely. No, silly. You should know that he's still in Manhattan, helping with the transition to the new research center. He should have been back by now. I thought he'd be joining me for the meeting with Captain Nightstalker. Falafel said, giving her a quizzical look. My host gasped. Oh yeah, he sent you a message on your terminal. I almost forgot. He said he won't be back until next week. Something about Ministry Mayor Applejack stopping for an inspection? He sighed, putting a hoof to his head. I should have figured he'd leave me to deal with this alone. You could always reschedule, my host said. I can get in contact with some pony and say you came down with something or that you can't make it to the meeting today, she said, walking over to a terminal and starting to type out a letter. No, Lily, I can't put this off. Plus, getting a hold of the captain ain't so easy. I'll just have to do this on my own and hope for the best, he said, giving her a smile. She blushed. Well, maybe I can help you prepare for the meeting. You said you had a couple of hours, right? Wow, she really likes him. Either that or something else in the room was doing things to her back there. I highly doubted it was the latter. He was blushing as well, running a hoof over his mane as he spoke sheepishly. <laughs> well, I did have some paperwork to finish, but I guess I can put that off for now. She walked around the corner and kissed his nose. It's not good to go into a meeting too stressed out, sir. Are you sure? 
I'm always sure, my host said, taking him by the hoof and leading him up towards the office I was in now. As she walked in, I saw the office looked like it did now, only cleaner. My host led the stallion over the desk and pushed him against it. Her lips met his and the two kissed passionately. The next hour or so was extremely uncomfortable for me. The two of them used the desk and floor like it was a bed, and went to town on each other. This was something I had never done before, and even though I was in another mare, every, I could feel... everything. Honestly, it felt pretty good, but I also felt a little violated. It was almost like it was my own first time, even if I wasn't really the one who was doing any of this. Oh, I had no idea America reflects like that. Wow. Okay, so I'm going to do my best to ignore the rest of the playing around they were doing. Finally, they finished, lying on the floor, both breathing hard, sweat rolling off their bodies. They held each other as they both looked up at the ceiling of Falafel's office. Falafel finally spoke after a little while. Do you ever worry about what will happen if we get caught, Lily? My host's eyes wandered over to his, the small smile on her face slowly fading away. She nuzzled into him, speaking slowly. I don't want to think about it. I just want to enjoy you while I can. He let out a deep sigh. If Flapjack found out, I don't know what I'd do. He'd be pissed. You two would fight. We would fight. He'd leave me. I don't think you two could handle something like that. I wish I would have met you before Flopjack did. Maybe things would have been different. She smiled again. Daddy wouldn't have allowed it, though. He always liked Flapjack, and you know how he feels about you. I don't care what your father thinks. All I know is that I love you. All my brother wanted out of marrying you was the money your father could invest into this business. You know, there was more to it than that. And you love this business just as much as he does. Falafel sighed slothfully. That was true once, but now, days, I'm not too sure. We hardly even make tools anymore. Since we partnered with the Ministry of our Wartime Technology, we're focusing more on making armor and new parts for firearms. Don't get me started on what we have to help Robronco with. Every pony has to do their best to help with the war effort. He looked over at my host with a sad look in his eyes. I know. And I still hate it sometimes. Sometimes I just wish I could go back to using my company to make tools to help farmers or carpenters, or even just the everyday stallion who builds things in his free time. I just want my old life back. She pulled him close and kissed him for a long moment. When she pulled away, she said softly, We all do, but unfortunately we can't, so we have to work hard to make sure Equestria makes it through this. FNF Tools has its part to play, and with your leadership, I know you'll do great things. You're right. But you can't blame a guy for dreaming. He said as he looked up towards the clock on the wall. His face went pale, and he jumped to his hooves. Fuck. The captain's gonna be here any minute. Quick! We need to get the office cleaned up before he shows up! The memory faded away that, after just they started to rush around trying to clean up, I moaned, lifting my head, looking around the office. I could still hear the storm raging outside, the thunder crackling and the rain falling. It was soothing for some reason. I looked over at the memory orb, slowly picking it up with a hoof. I wonder why you made a memory orb over that. It didn't seem like much happened apart from the affair. Then it hit me. Those two had fallen in love, but for some reason couldn't be together. Maybe this memory was just something special to Falafel. I wonder what happened to them after this. I probably would never find out. Life was just unfair like that. A memory orb was like reading a book somewhere in the middle and never getting to see the beginning or the end. I sighed and went to roll off the cot. I noticed something wet in my nethers. I looked down and saw a wet stain between my legs. I groaned and rolled away. I really didn't think I enjoyed the memory that much. Trying to get my mind off everything, I decided to see what was on the radio. Lifting my pit buck, I went to turn on DJ Pony. When I brought up the radio tab, my pit buck, I saw two more stations had shown up. 
One was listed as Emergency Broadcast 6109, the other as Radio New Pegasus. I thought it was interesting how my pit buck knew what things were called, but by this point I was getting used to the pit buck's features. I moved down the list and selected the third channel for DJ Pony. It was just finishing a song, and the DJ came on. Hello, my faithful listeners! That was the beautiful voice of Sweetie Belle, came the stallion's voice over the airwaves. He started talking about some local news from back east near Manhattan, then further away in Hoofington. And if you're traveling anywhere near Ponyville, be sure to clear steer of that ghost town. We've been getting reports of slavers traveling near there. Those mixed with the raiders who have taken up there is more than good reason to stay away. I listened for a bit longer, and I was about to change it, when the DJ said something that caught my ear. Now, listeners, for those of you all the way out west, I know I don't bring you much news, but earlier tonight, something happened that caught my attention. For the past few years, a town of fiends has been under the mountain, where the abandoned Stable Nine was. Well, as of a few hours ago, the town has been destroyed. Buried by the same mountain that hailed Stable Nine. Now I know what you're thinking. DJ Pony, how could an entire mountain just fall onto a town like that? The DJ went on after a moment's pause. Well, I don't have all the information yet. But from what I know so far, there were sightings of a strange creature flying away from the mouth of the cave where the entrance to the stable was. That, however, wasn't the strangest thing. No, not at all. Right after the creature flew off from the stable, none other than the mysterious courier mare I spoke of before was seen trying to escape the stable with little help. Reports I have so far don't say much about what happened, but I know that she was captured by the leader of the fiends. A while later, she was spotted running away from the town right before a huge explosion took out the mountain and the town. My jaw dropped open. What the hell? How does he know all that? Stable Nine and the fiends that lived around the town are all gone now. And if you ask me, faithful listeners, I say good riddance. The fiends in that area have been causing a lot of problems for the settlements around there. So if you're out there somewhere, little Miss Courier Mare, thank you from me and the rest of the ponies around that area. Keep up the good work. Ah, that's it for now. This is DJ Pony, bringing you the truth no matter how hard it hurts. Next up is Sapphire Shores. I clicked the radio off and just looked at my pit buck in astonishment. It hadn't been that long since I left the damn town buried under rock and fire. How the hell did a pony all the way to Manhattan figure out so much already? Why didn't you mention my friends? If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have made it out alive. I mean, yeah, I was the one who blew up the stable, but Aura helped. Kind of. So what if I was the one who'd blown up that goddess's forsaken place and took out the fiends who were left in the town? I didn't do it to help anyone. I only did it to kill the monsters living in the stable so they couldn't get out. I fell onto my back on the cot and groaned, covering my eyes with a hoof. Why? I just don't understand why. Uncovering my eyes, I looked up at the ceiling. I did my best to forget about the DJ and his talk of me saving ponies, even if I didn't. Taking down the raiders back in Cartwheel was mostly luck. And really the same thing with Stable Nine. Right now, I just needed to get back to the rangers and check on my friends. That was the first priority. Second was treating my radiation sickness. Even with the storm still raging outside, I started to wonder if I should just leave and try to get back to Hidden Sands. I couldn't seem to rest. My mind was wandering, and I had no idea what else to do. I didn't want to go back into the storm, either. I thought maybe I should at least try and get some sleep. Maybe I'd feel better. Maybe if I could get some sleep, my body wouldn't feel so horrible. That blast from Stable Nine was still making my body feel off. I closed my eyes to go to sleep, and out of nowhere, a loud bloom came from downstairs. My eyes snapped open, and I jumped to my hooves, grabbing my shotgun beside the cot. Quietly, I made my way over to the door, and pressed an ear to it. Right as my ear touched the door, I heard Watts on the other side of it. Miss Shadowstar, are you in there? He asked from the other side of the door. 
Yeah? I'm fine. What was that sound? I whispered, keeping my voice down just in case. Oh, it seems some ponies broke through the front door. Stay in there and I'll take care of them. Wait, no. Don't go down there, Watts. I tried to say, but I heard him floating away. Damn, he's gonna get himself killed or destroyed. Or whatever it is for a robot. I loaded my shotgun, then listened at the door again, waiting to hear what had happened. If whoever they were attacked Watts, they'd be down there in seconds. Good evening, and welcome to FNF Tools. I'm sorry, but we're closed for the evening. I could hear Watts saying from downstairs. A deep voice echoed up. Shut it, robot. We're looking for some pony. We have a feeling she came this way. Sorry, sir, but no pony's been here in quite a long time. I'll have to ask you to leave. Listen here, you deformed hunk of metal. We don't have time to be messing around. Another voice said, followed by a loud bang. I heard something metallic hit the ground. Unlocking the door, I opened it slowly and started to sneak to the stairwell. I went part way down, then peeked over the railing to see who'd broken into the lobby. I wasn't expecting what I saw. Three Pegasi were standing in the lobby. The one, who was close to the fallen robot, had a shiny red coat and black mane. Black combat armor covered his back and chest. The one next to him was a white mare with a short, cut pink mane. She was dressed just like the Red Stallion. The third was... Uh... Well, I couldn't tell if it was a stallion or a mare, concerning the fact that the pony was wearing black power armor. It was nothing like I'd seen before. It had a buggy look to it. It also looked lighter than what the Steel Rangers wore. The visor over the eyes reminded me of a bug. The armor itself was a carapace, and its tail was ended with a sharp, glowing stinger. Oh yeah, and all through her pegasi. Take a look around. We need to find her. If she's been traveling with him, she might know where he's gone. Remember not to shoot her, even if she shoots at you. If she's dead, she can't tell us where he is. Try to be as peaceful as possible, even if she is a savage. The pony in the power armor said. Got it. Don't shoot the savage, the other stallion said cooperatively. I guess the pony in the power armor was a stallion too. At least it sounded like it. Who's this mysterious he they're looking for? Could they mean Stardust? It could be. I had no way of knowing. As far as I knew, I had no way out of here. So I'd either have to try and shoot my way past them, or hope I could hide in the office. Neither option looked good to me. On my EFS, they showed up white. So for the moment, they weren't hostile. If I was lucky, maybe I could talk my way out of this. Auntie always said I had a way with words. I had to keep my head down and pray to Celestia for this to work. I said loudly, Hey, that robot you shot was a friend of mine. Didn't any pony ever teach you it was rude to barge in and break some pony's stuff? I heard two of the ponies jump, and a hum start coming from their direction. It must have been their weapons warming up to fire. The pony in the power armor replied, looking around the room for the source of my voice. Don't fire. It looks like our prey found us. Yes, sir. Both said quickly. So I guess he was a stallion. Good to know. Still searching for my position, he asked. Are you the mayor who took down the town near that stable just north of here? I might be. Who's asking? I asked, slowly moving down towards the bottom of the stairs. Sergeant Winterfrost. The two with me are Windstorm and Nimbus. We're looking for an escaped prisoner. Reports say he was in the company of a pony known as the Courier Mare. I peeked around the corner, checking on their positions. The two in combat armor were looking towards where I was. The one in armor, Winterfrost, was looking around towards the ceiling, with his head moving around slowly. I wonder what he was looking for. I turned my head to project my voice upward towards the top of the stairs. I've been called that by DJ Pony, but I don't know anything about a prisoner. His name is Stardust Knight. He escaped from our facility, and we're looking to bring him back. Winterfrost said, with his voice calm and steady. They were looking for Stardust? What was this about him escaping from a facility? I wonder if it meant the stable he was from. Or maybe it was some kind of prison? I didn't know much about him. 
but I couldn't see him being an escaped prisoner. What facility are you talking about? And why should I tell you if I know this Stardust Knight? He's a deranged pony who's a wanted fugitive. That's all you need to know. Well, I don't know a pony by that name, so I can't help you. Maybe I'd get lucky and they'll fall for the lie and leave me be. I heard their guns starting to hum again as Winter's Frost spoke. Listen here, Courier. You were spotted with a Pegasus just a few hours ago. Don't lie to us. We need to find him and take him back where he belongs. Okay, this was getting annoying. I'll say it again. I don't know who you're talking about. Whose authority do you have to just come and take any pony anyway? The authority of the Grand Pegasus Enclave, that's who. All Pegasi and Equestria are under our directive. This Pegasus is a criminal, and he has to pay for his crimes. If you don't tell us where he is, you'll be taken prisoner and interrogated until you disclose his location. Winterfrost said with a hint of annoyance. Yeah. That's not happening. Try again next week. Maybe I'll have a clue of who you're talking about then. I said, peeking around the corner once again. The stallioned windstorm moved closer to the stairs, the ends of his guns glowing pink. You want to do this the hard way? Fine with me. Go get her. Yes, sir! They both said again. As they did, Windstorm moved closer and was about to go up the stairs. I chose then to whip around the corner at the bottom of the stairway, pointing my shotgun right at his head. He had a momentary look of surprise as I pulled the trigger. To my surprise, he twisted around quickly as the shot went off, the buckshot only grazing the side of his cheek and helmet. As he turned, Nimbus bit down on the bit that was attached to both of her guns. It fired two jets of pink light towards me. I managed to dodge one, but the second beam hit my side, burning right through my duster and singeing my side. I screamed in pain as I fell back to the stairway. Wincing, I started to go back up the stairs. Windstorm and Nimbus ran towards me, but I fired off two rounds, making them take cover around the corner. My side was burning in pain as I made my way to the top of the stairs and ducked around the corner as two more beams hit the wall. I fired again back down the stairs, but it didn't look as if it hit anything. Ma'am, head to the roof. There's a way out up there, came the voice of Watts from downstairs. I guess he was still kicking. I looked back down towards the hall, towards the office, and noticed another door that was opened to another stairway. If I ran for it, I just got around the doorway, when more bursts of light flew past me, flushing the door to the office. It exploded into bits of wood and light. I chanced to look down the hall again and saw Winter Frost slowly walking towards me, his two minions close behind. I looked back towards the office and saw my saddlebags. I had to get out of here, but I still needed those. The whole reason for doing this mission was sitting in my saddlebags. There's no way out of here, Courier. It would be best if you just surrender now, before you get hurt. The armored pony said. No way! I'd rather die than go anywhere with you! I yelled back at him, frantically looking around for anything that could help me out. Then I saw it. There was a box next to the stairs that led up to the roof with the word Danger. Explosives stamped onto it. Now that looked fun. I do like a good bang. Using my weak magic, I pulled out a couple of metal apples with a dark red band around them. As I pulled one of them out, a nail sticking out of a box, caught the stem, and pulled it. The handle on the side popped up and off, followed by a slight clicking sound. Oh shit, I said, and threw the metal apple down the hallway. Fuck, get down, yelled Winter Frost, followed by another loud explosion. Flames flew down the hallway, followed by a loud rumble. When it passed, I took another look down the hall. The ceiling had fallen down, blocking the path. Blood was pooling from under one of the large pieces of concrete. I wasn't sure what happened, but I could only see two red bars on my EFS. Looks like I got one of them, but two were still left alive. At the moment, no pony was shooting at me through the gaps in the concrete, so I turned and grabbed my saddlebags and shot back towards the stairs that led up the roof. I made sure to put the rest of the explosives crate's contents in my saddlebags as I passed by it. As I made my way to the roof, I saw more red bars. How many of those motherfuckers are there? I pushed the door open, keeping to the shadows coming off of the ventilation shafts on the roof. 
I snuck towards the side of the building. Looking up, I saw six more pegasi flying around in the rain. Thankfully, none of them noticed me coming out of the doorway. There was a loud bang from the street, followed by the voice of Winterfrost. She's escaped! Check the roof! The bitch killed Winstrom. I want her taken alive. Hurt her as much as you want, but keep her alive. She's mine. His voice echoed up. All six ponies flew towards the roof, magical energy weapons glowing as they started to search for me. I was like a sitting duck up here. There probably wasn't any way for me to leave without getting seen. I had a couple more of those grenades, but I wasn't sure how well they'd work in wide open spaces. I wanted to scream with frustration as I looked for a way out of the situation. My magic was still weak, so teleporting was out of the question. I still felt sick from the massive amounts of radiation I took for exploding the stable, so I wasn't sure how fast I could run either. One of the pegasi came around the corner where I was hiding. He started to yell a warning, but my shotgun came up first and blasted him in the face. He fell back, blood flying in the air. Shots rang out as the other pegasi turned in my direction. Two flew up into the air, firing down at me. I jumped out of the way, but I was still stuck up here with nowhere to go. I fired another pegasus that came running towards me. He dodged my shot and ducked behind a chuck of concrete that was sticking up out of the roof. I ran back to the door that led into the building and used it as my own cover, hoping that it would keep the firing enemies from firing down at me. Now I was really trapped. The hall was blocked and ponies were blocking the roof. I heard a rumbling sound from behind me. Quickly turned and I saw Watts floating there. Watts? You're okay? How did you get over here? The hall's blocked by rubble. They only shot me with an energy rifle. Did a number on my internal circuits. Nothing I couldn't handle. It just took a bit of myself getting up and going again. As to how I got here, there's another way up from down below, through the factory. I looked back through the open door, then back at the robot. Is there a way out through there? He pointed his claw arm towards another door across the hall. Yes, ma'am. That way leads down to the factory. There's a back door on the other end. Why didn't you tell me to go that way instead of towards the roof? I said, irritatedly watching the door to the roof. The factory isn't really a safe way to go. I didn't know they would have friends up on the roof. The Pegasus landed at the threshold of the door ready to fire his energy rifles. I brought up my shotgun ready to fire, but Watts floated past me firing bolts of energy of his own. The Pegasus wasn't fast enough to avoid the shot. Two of the bolts hit and the porty, uh, pony started to glow. In an instant, his body turned to ash. Two more ponies landed by the door and started firing towards us. Using my magic, I slammed the door shut. I don't care how dangerous the factory is. It can't be much worse than this, I said, going back into the hall. Miss Shadowstar, the factory is full of radiation. It was repurposed a few years ago before the war ended to make bombs. After all the years, some of the bombs left over started to leak. Watts said, sounding genuinely concerned. I can tell that you've already been exposed to a lot of radiation recently. I'm not sure you could handle more exposure. Pardon my brashness, considering the situation, but you're positively glowing. Great. Now I'm being compared to a glow stick. I looked back towards the door to the roof. It was starting to glow red as shots of energy hit it from the other side. I'll risk it, I said, making my way towards the door. I was starting to regret coming to this place. I just made it through the door, shutting it when the door to the roof blew open. Looking around frantically, I saw a large filing cabinet lying on its side. Using my magic, I tried to lift it. It lifted a little, but it didn't have the power to make it flip over. Reading my mind, Watts floated over and pushed at the filing cabinet. Slowly, it floated in front of the door. I let it fall to the ground with a bang against the door. Okay, which way do we take to get out of here? I asked Watts, looking around the factory. I could see tall windows over most of the walls, letting in dim light from the lightning flashing outside. Conveyors ran up and down the large area, with places for ponies to either run the machines or inspect the work as they made its way down the line. I could see a few skeletons along the small walkways, and cracked metal shells leaking rainbow fluid. As I stood over the factory, I noticed my pit buck was slowly clicking. If you hurry, down the main walkway, Miss Shadowstar, you'll find a rear exit. I'm sure you'll be able to get out through there. 
he said, starting to head towards the stairs. If you say so, I said, following the robot. We made our way down to the factory floor, just past another door that I figured led back into the front office. Walking down the aisle, I did my best to not step on any of the twisted skeletons. My pit bucks clicking got faster and faster as I got closer to the middle of the factory. Something in my gut was starting to wiggle, and my vision started going red around the edges. My pit buck kept sending flashes across my vision, saying that I was experiencing severe radiation sickness. Miss Shadowstar, are you feeling okay? Watts asked as we grew closer to the double doors leading to freedom. No, I'm not. I can keep going. We're almost there. I said weakly. I took a couple more steps towards him when a few red bars showed up my EFS. Watts, we need to hide. I said quickly, ducking under one of the conveyor belts just in time. The doors blasted open, followed by four pegasi. Leading them was Winter Frost. Watts let his body fall to the ground, looking like just a broken robot. This is the only other way she could have found. Find her, Winter Frost said. Sir? Can't you locate her on your EFS? One of them asked. Something in this place is interfering with it. Start looking. She's here. I know it. He said, starting to walk down the main aisle. So, he did have an EFS in that helmet. I was wondering about that. I wonder why it didn't work, though. My own was working fine. Maybe it has something to do with my pit buck? Or maybe I was just made better than his power armor? Keeping to the shadows, I slowly holstered my shotgun then pull out Aura's energy spear. If I shot anything in here, they'd hear it right away, and I'd be screwed. Stealth is what I needed right now. I slowly made my way over to Watts and whispered, Stay here. Don't move unless you have to. I have a plan. In response, he moved one of his camera eyes up and down. Winter Frost was the biggest threat to me right now, but his power armor looked like it could block an attack from the spear. So I kept close to the ground and continued towards a blue pegasus a couple aisles down from me. Holding the energy spear in my magic, I moved behind him as he looked under one of the conveyor belts. I hit the switch near the bottom of the spear and it lit up like a light. He must have noticed the glow because, as I came up, he turned to look. When he saw me, he started to yell out an alarm. I stepped forward, sending the tip of the spear through his left eye. His body started convulsing violently, his cry coming out as a hissing moan before his body fell to the ground, sliding off the end of the spear. I flipped off the blood and ducked under the conveyor belt, checking to see if anyone noticed. All I saw was the face of the dead Pegasus, his eyes smoking where I stabbed him. Moving quickly, I got behind another one, and using the spear, I thrust it into the back of his head. He gave off a small scream before he died. I dropped back down to the ground as Winter Frost and the other Pegasi turned. It started to creep away from the body. What the fuck was that? Winter Frost asked making his way towards me and the pony I just killed. We're our Quicksilver and Moonstone, Monsoon. I found Monsoon's body. He's dead, the mayor said. Some pony got him with an energy spear or a lance. There's a smoking hole in his eye. Winter Frost started looking around. Looks like I was right. Our friend is still here. He put a hoof to his helmet. Send more ponies down to the factory. Cover the entrances. I do not want to let her escape. Okay, well now I'm fucked. I whispered to myself, trying my best to make my way around the mare who was walking towards where I killed the last pony. Boss, looks like she got Quicksilver too. She said, moving closer to the body and putting her back towards me. That bitch. He was a good soldier. She'll pay for this. Winterfrost said as three more Pegasi made their way into the factory. I couldn't stay here too much longer. A rad meter was deep in the yellow, winching closer to the red. My stomach was doing loops. I wasn't sure how long I could handle my magic. I moved closer to Watts and whispered, Just stay down. I'm going to see if I can sneak past them. He shook one of his eyes, but I just ignored it and moved past him. The robot started to move, so I gave him a long look until he stopped. There's no way out of here, kid. I have plenty of sentries around the perimeter. If you come on out, I'll go easy on you, even though you killed my soldiers," Winter Frost said, slowly walking down each aisle. Moving in the other direction, I said, I thought you would have given up on that tactic by now. If you want to catch me, you're going to have to do it the hard way. 
He turned towards the direction my voice came from, the beam rifles and his sides glowing. So, you're still in here. How long do you think you can hide from us? Not too much longer, but I plan on getting out of here before I have to worry about that. I said, making sure to keep moving, staying low. I will admit it. You do have determination for such a small pony. If you'd grown up in the Enclave, you would have made a good soldier. Even for a unicorn. I'm flattered, but I think the lack of wings would have been a problem. I said, getting closer to the mare, who was still moving slowly down the other aisle. You should be. It's not often that I compliment a dirt pony like yourself. He said as, he, as I jumped and went to stab the mare. As I went for her, Winter Frost yelled, Tuck and roll, Feather Duster! The mare reacted quickly, ducking under my thrust, then rolling around, batting the spear away. She threw her other hoof up, cracking me under the chin, and throwing me back. Dazed, I rolled away from her next kick, doing my best to grab hold of the spear again. Jumping to my hooves, I activated sats. I aimed three shots towards her head. As time slowed, I struck, but due to the radiation sickness, my aim was off. My first two missed her head to the side. My last strike nicked her cheek and clipped her ear. Blood landed on the floor as she yelled from the deep cut. Flipping the spear around, I attacked again, but she wasn't having it. She flipped around and bucked me in the chest, throwing me back. I heard and felt a snap in my chest. Pain racked my body as I screamed as I fell onto a skeleton. She walked over towards me, aiming her rifle at me. Don't move! Winter Frost walked over next, to her chuckling a little as he spoke. <laughs> Time's up, courier. Are you ready to tell me what I want to know? I smiled up at him, doing my best to ignore the pain in my chest. It felt like I broke a couple ribs. Or at least cracked them. It's hard to breathe, that's for sure. Now I'm good. You're finished, courier. You're sick and out of options. Now tell me where I can find Stardust. I tasted blood in my mouth from the kick to my jaw, and I spit it right into his face. I smiled again and gasped out. The answer's still no. So why don't you just kill me and get it over with? You won't hurt her again, you ruffians! Watts yelled from across the room, firing his built-in energy pistol at the two. Winter Frost just let the beam hit his armor. When it bounced off, he turned and fired his own at the robot. The beam hit Watts. Two of his eyes exploded and his floating talisman went out as he fell to the ground, sparks flying everywhere. He turned back towards me as an armored hoof came up to wipe off the blood from his visor. That's a lot better. Looks like that damned robot was the center of interference here. Now that that's out of the way, let's get back to our conversation. Tears rolled down my face as I looked over at the destroyed robot. I knew he was just a machine, but he helped me. It was my fault what happened to him. I looked back at Winter Frost, glaring at him as I spoke. Fuck you and your damned enclave. A sigh came from his muzzle. I can see you're determined to the end. Fine. Have it your way. You're of no more use to me. I'll have to find another way to find him. His beam gun started to glow again as he pointed them towards me. I was going to die. There was no way around it. But I wasn't going to go down without one last fight. Using what little magic I had left, I took hold of the energy spear, activated sats, and aimed two shots towards Winterfrost's head. Both attacks missed, but I sat there in the peaceful word of sats. Something moved in my peripheral vision, moving faster than any pony should be able to when the spell matrix was active. A pony in a long trench coat and a desperado hat landed among the ponies who were starting to come in from the exit of the factory. I couldn't tell what color his coat was because he was wrapped in bandages to keep his face hidden. His eyes shadowed by the hat's brim. He pulled out a long-barreled revolver and in quick succession shot off six shots, killing all the ponies who had slowly been coming through. As the spell matrix started to fade, he jumped over the falling bodies, reloading his revolver as he moved. He landed next to the mare as the spell finished and time went back to normal. What the fuck? It was all she got out before the mysterious pony apple bucked her in the jaw, sending her flying through the air. As she flew backwards, 
he lifted his revolver and fired. The bullet punched a hole through her chest. She was dead before she hit the ground. Winter Frost flipped around and fired the mysterious pony. He, however, dodged to one side. The beam was missing him by inches. The mysterious pony rolled along the ground, stopping next to me. His revolver trained on Winter Frost's head. Winter Frost glared at him from inside his power armor. Who the fuck are you? Do you realize who you've just attacked? The pony spoke. His voice was tinny and deep, like he himself was in power armor. No pony, really. Just a wanderer. Tell me, why is the Enclave trying to kill a small mare like this? Did she do something to earn the wrath of the Enclave? She has information that we need, and it's none of your concern. The mysterious pony looked around at the dead pegasi. It looks like it is now. I suggest you leave, Sergeant Winterfrost, before you find yourself in the same situation as your friends. In response, Winterfrost only laughed, then fired his weapon once again. The mysterious pony grabbed hold of me, jumping high, landing on the other side of a pile of inactive bombshells. As he landed, I saw bandaged wings folding under his coat. Setting me down carefully, he picked up the energy spear and placed it next to me as he turned back towards Winter Frost. You're fast for a dirt pony, I'll give you that. I'm also surprised you know who I am. Too bad I don't have the time to find out how you know so much. Unfortunately, I'm running out of time. For your crime of killing the soldiers of the Enclave, I sentence you to death, Winterfrost said, firing another blast of magical energy towards the pony. Like before, he dodged it, then fired back at the armored stallion. The bullet bit through the leg of Winterfrost's armor, and he howled in pain as the leg gave out. The mysterious pony shot twice more, disconnecting the wires that ran from the sides of the power armor to the twin energy rifles. I'll say it again, Sergeant. Leave here now before it's too late. I really don't want to kill another Enclave soldier if I don't have to. But I will if you try and attack this young mare or me again. Winterfrost lifted himself back up, his right foreleg shaking violently. You bastard. I'll make sure you pay for this. But I know when I'm in a pinch. He looked over at me. We meet again, Courier. Count on it. And when we do, Stardust won't be the only one I'm after. I wanted to say something witty and sarcastic back to him like Stardust probably would have, but all I could do was cough and give a weak, bloody smile. Winter Frost flapped his wings and flew out of the open door, vanishing into the storm that still raged outside. I hope he gets struck by lightning, you son of a bitch, I said to myself, hoping my wish would come true. When that was done, the mysterious pony turned around again, bolstering his revolver and walking back towards me. Who are you? I asked as he knelt down, pulling a healing potion and a couple of rataways out of his packs. He looked down at me, his eyes still covered by the shadow of his desperado hat, as he spoke in his small, deep voice. No pony. Just a stranger who saw a pony in need. Now drink this. Your radiation levels are dangerously high, and you have a couple of broken ribs. The potion will help, but you still need to see a doctor. I drank the potions, feeling their effect immediately. Thanks for your help. You should call your Steel Ranger friends for help. They have a patrol not far from here. Should be able to reach you with your broadcaster. He said, turning to leave. Wait a minute. He stopped and looked back to me as I continued. At least tell me your name and why a pegasus would kill his own kind. The bandages around his lips rose as if he were smiling. Not yet, Shadow. Stay safe. And watch who you make friends with. It could get you killed. Before I could ask him what he meant, there was a flash of light and he was gone. I looked around for a moment, confused at what he said. What in the fuck was that all about? Miss Shadow! The mechanical voice of Watts echoed from behind me. I turned and saw his remaining eye was lifted and he looked over at me. Watts? You're still alive? 
In a small sense, I suppose. The more important question is, are you okay? He said, moving one of his spidery limbs, dragging himself towards me. I walked over to him slowly, my body still hurting. When I reached him, I knelt down. Don't waste any more of your energy. His eye looked up at me as he said with a crackle in his voice. Do you think Master Falafel would have been proud of me? Holding back a tear, I said, Yeah, very proud, Watts. Just rest for now. I'll see if we can get you fixed. Good idea, Miss Shadowstar. I'll do that. His eye fell forward, the body going limp. I wasn't sure if he was gone or just powered down. Not caring, I lifted the robot in my weak magic, and or a spear, then started making my way out of the factory. When I made it out, I checked the sky quickly for any sign of Enclave. Apart from the rain still falling, I couldn't see any sign of them. Remembering what that pony told me, I lifted my pit buck and checked the broadcaster. I saw a couple channels showing up. One of them jumbled letters. The other was Military 6BT67J. Hoping I was right, I clicked the latter and ignored the former. I had no idea how this worked, so I just started to speak. This is Courier Shadowstar of Equestrian Express. I'm alone and in need of help. If any steel rangers are in the area of the old FNF tool factory, please come help. When I finished, I saw an icon that said set to repeat. I clicked it, then dropped the menu, hoping it would work. Looking around, I saw one of the depilated buildings. Still a little bit of a roof left on it. I made my way over to it. I climbed through a hole into the side and sat under the roof against one of the walls, setting Watt next to me. I lifted the spear and looked it over again. I was amazed at how well it was crafted. Whoever Aura got this from, they had taken their time and put a lot of work into it. With a sigh, I folded the spear up and stuck it back into my bags. I closed my eyes and tried to ignore the pain that still ran through my body. The potions had helped, but I still felt sick, and my chest hurt with each breath I took. I really hoped I wouldn't have to wait too long for some pony to find me. As I waited there, I started to think about that mysterious pony who came to help me. Why would he hide who he is like that? Was he trying to keep his identity secret from the Enclave? Or from me? I know I saw wings under the trench coat. But he also just vanished like a pony who teleported. He was definitely a good fighter, and scary fast. I guess I'm lucky he was on my side. Or at least acted like he was. If he hadn't been, there's no way I could have taken him on. A little bit of time went by. The rain started to slow down, giving the sound of silence to the dark night. As I sat there, just looking out towards the cloudy sky, a light glistened on the road. I tucked my head back behind the wall, listening for whoever was out there. I could see four white bars on my EFS. That didn't mean they were friendly, only not hostile at the moment. Paladin Stock, that looks like the place, a voice said from across the road. The transmission said she would be here. Scribe Hazel, Knight Jasper, go check it out, another voice said, followed by two voices saying, yes sir. I peeked around the corner and saw three ponies in power armor and a unicorn mare in a uniform. Picking up Watts and the saddlebags, I limped out of the building across from FNF Tools, shouting, I'm right here! The three in power armor quickly turned, two aiming rocket launchers at me. The one who wasn't was a huge pony in dark gray armor. With a strict firmness, he said, Identify yourself. I'm Shadowstar. I sent the distress call. I assume you're the patrol from the Steel Rangers? Sir, she matched the description given by the Elder, the mayor in the uniform said. The larger pony looked at the other two in power armor. Lower your weapons. She's the one we're looking for. He then started walking towards me. Shadowstar, I'm Paladin Celery Stock. We received your transmission. We were out here looking for you anyway. Your friends made it back to the bunker safe and sound. Elder Appleslice asked us to go looking for you. I slumped as exhaustion overtook me, Watts and the saddlebags falling to the ground. The mayor ran over and started looking me over. You don't look well, Miss Star. Tell me what's wrong and where it hurts. 
You'll have to wait to look her over, Scribe Hazel. That talent company we saw can't be far behind. I'm sure they picked up on that transmission, too. Paladin Stock said, as he looked back towards his two knights. You two keep your eyes on the sky. Scribe Hazel, you'll have to look over her while we travel. Shadow, are you okay to walk? I looked over at him and tried to stand, but my legs wouldn't move. I'm sorry, but I don't think I can go on. My body's taken too much, and I've been suffering from radiation poisoning. Then you'll have to ride on my back, he said, turning again. Scribe Hazel, follow alongside of me and try to look her over while we move. Yes, sir, she said with a weird salute to her chest. Wait, riding your what now? I tried to say, but the large pony lifted me with his hoof and placed me on his back. One of the knights grabbed my saddlebags and they all formed up. I looked over to Watts. Wait, we can't leave him behind. Paladin Stock looked over at the broken robot. You mean that hunk of junk? We don't have time to be carrying about broken junk. I wiggled and tried to slide off the large pony. He held me back in the factory. I'm going to leave him behind. Can't you at least bring him with and try to fix him? Scribe Hazel looked over the robot. The robot is Gen 3, Mr. Handy. It's memory, and most of its internal parts are still intact. We don't have time to discuss this. Night Coconut Cream, grab the robot and let's get going. I stopped my wiggling and looked back at him. Thank you, Paladin. No thanks are needed. It's simple. If I fight you on this, it'll take longer to get out of here. He said, then exclaimed, Hurry it up, and let's move on. With that, the other three formed up on him. Then we were off. The armored ponies running down the road towards the dark hills. As they ran, Scribe Hazel started casting a spell over me and mumbling under her breath. My body started to tingle as she worked whatever magic she was using. She stopped her mumbling, then looked at me. That can't be right. With a worried look, I asked. What's wrong? Did I take more radiation than I thought? It's true you took a lot of radiation. You also took some rat away. That, I know for sure, and it helped. You also have three cracked ribs, and a couple torn muscles, and some other minor injuries that'll need to be looked at by the doctors. That's not what worries me, she said, giving me a strange look. Then, what's wrong? Something inside you... It feels... Before she could finish what she was saying, a loud scream filled the air. The knight, carrying the saddlebags, yelled, Griffin's Paladin! At least two wings! Looking up, I saw six griffins diving at us from the sky, three of them coming from the north, the others from the northeast. Paladin Stock cursed under his breath. Shadow, hold on to me tight. I did as he said, wrapping my hooves around his metal neck. He flipped around, skidding to a halt. Two massive guns folded out from the sides of his power armor. With a loud bang, he fired at the descending griffins. The wing he fired at all banged sharply to one side. The other wing dove for the knights. One pulled out a long, rusty-looking tube. Missile! Scribe Hazel yelled. The large stallion I was on whipped around again and fired his massive guns. The griffin exploded into red mist and chunks of meat. The metal tube he was holding fell towards the ground. The others opened fire with oddly shaped rifles. I felt magic envelop me, pulling me away from paladin stock. I looked over to see Scribe Hazel using her magic to levitate me towards her. We were behind a rock, keeping us safe from the small battle going on. I looked over at her and asked, What's going on? They look like red talons. They have a contract to get a hold of you, from what we know. They must have heard your transmission. They sent two wings to retrieve you. She said, ducking her head as an explosion went off on the other side of the boulder. Why, though? Aura stole their contract so she could fulfill the bounty. When she heard my side of the story, I thought she would have told them after I left, I asked. We aren't sure why yet. Normally, we use the talents for bounties, or receive high-end tech that we can't get ourselves. They usually keep quiet about their clients unless they're informing the pony with the bounty of the situation. I think your friend might have forgot to tell them your side of the story. Well, let's shoot now and ask questions later. I'm going to stop you right there. You're sick and injured. There's no way I'm going to let you fight. Just stay here and wait until we can control the situation. Hazel said, putting a hoof on my shoulders. So you expect me to sit back and hide while you protect me? 
I can still fight. If you guys didn't show up, I probably would have had to fight just to get back to the bunker. You probably feel like you can fight, but you'll just end up making your injuries worse or you'll die. Just stay here and let us do our job. We need you to stay safe, she said sternly. If you want to fight, just kill her. All she is to you is an obstacle between you and your true power. A malicious but familiar voice said in my head. I'm not going to kill her. She's an ally, not an obstacle. What do you mean by true power anyway? And who the fuck are you? I said, the voice in my head. That's a stupid question. It's simple, really. I'm you. The real you. Your true potential. The voice said again. Me? How can you be me? I'm me, not you. You're just the overly tired, crazy bitch in my head. A delusion created by my subconscious from what I've seen in the wasteland. Believe what you will. My power, or should I say, your true power, can turn all those griffins and rangers into dust. Are you okay, Shadow? Hansel asked, sounding worried. I'm fine. Sorry about that. I think all the radiation scrapped my brain a little bit. I said, thumbing the side of my head with a hoof. Like I said, you should stay here. You're in no shape to fight. All right, I'll stay here. I have my guns in case something happens. All right. Just remember, bullets can ricochet if you hear a shot hit near you. Check your surroundings before you run. She said as she rocked away. I could hear bullets flying in every direction. Explosions from missiles and grenades rattling the air. What was that voice in my head? Could I really be some evil monster? Is that why I don't remember anything from when I was younger? Sweet Celestia, I can't even figure out myself anymore. You should have listened to me. I could have helped you. The voice came again. Just go away. I'll never listen to you. You're a figment of imagination. You aren't real. Fine then. I'll just bide my time until the day you let your guard down. I'll take over myself, without you having to let me in. When that day comes, I'll show you what it's like to be locked in your own mind like a caged animal. And I'll make you watch from that cage as I slowly kill every pony you love. See you soon, Morning Star. A chill ran down my spine at the thought of whatever that voice was, taking me over, trapping me away. I can't let that happen. I just have to make sure I kept my guard up, if I could. Quite a show, isn't it? Griffins and ponies fighting to the death, a voice said from behind me. I quickly turned around, pulled out my pistol, only to have it knocked away by a large griffin standing before me. Before I knew it, I was on the ground, the griffin standing on top of me with an energy spear similar to auras at the ready. Get, get off! Do you really think it's that easy? Just say, get off, and I'll let ya. He replied arrogantly. It, it was worth a shot. I struggled to get out as he pressed down harder on my chest, his talons piercing my skin. Unfortunately for you, they don't need you alive anymore. The one who put out the bounty on you said all she needs is that pip buck off your foreleg. So now I get to enjoy the pleasure of killing you. He said, clenching harder on his spear, readying himself. I could feel a stirring in the pit of my stomach when he said that. I don't know if it was my organs mutating from the radiation or the fact that I was about to die. It was even getting harder to breathe. Then I remembered he was practically crushing me with his talons. Right as he started to come down with his spear, I blacked out. I was suddenly in an endless white void, surrounded by nothingness. It felt cold, but hot at the same time. Breathing felt more like something I could choose to do rather than something I needed to do. Even though I could feel the sensation of hot or cold, I couldn't feel my body. It was like I was just a spirit wandering around in an endless expanse of nothing. Am I dead? I thought to myself. Not yet, but you will be soon, the voice from before said. I turned, at least I think I did and saw some red eyes from my dream the night before. Who are you? I asked, my voice coming out as a whisper instead of the scream I intended. Before my eyes, a pony appeared in front of me. She had a silvery white coat, dark red eyes, 
a sharpened horn, and a black mane styled a lot like my own. Instead of a normal cutie mark on her flanks, she had a dark sky with moving stars inside. She grinned at me and said in that same voice, It's nice to finally meet you. Face to face. Morning Star. That's not my name. I'm Shadow Star. I said, trying to look away from her, but failing. Her grin only widened. That may be true now, but not always. Who are you anyway? Where are we? She looked around at the nothingness. I'm not sure. Your mind is the one making all of this. If you wanted, you could be anywhere. Think of this place like a dream. Only you can control more of what's going on around you. As for who I am, that's a tricky question to answer. Let's just say for now that I'm another part of you, Shadow Star. So what do I call you then? I asked, thinking about what she just said. Taking a moment, I imagined my body, and a second later it was there. And I felt more like myself again. The nothingness around us changed, and now we were in the atrium of Stable 28. Ah, there you go. You're starting to understand how this world works. As for my name, that's also something I can't explain to you. Since you choose not to call yourself by your true name, then I'll take it. Call me Morningstar, she said, slowly walking around the atrium, looking around. I never much liked it here. Why did you pick this dull place? I'm not sure. I guess because it reminds me of better times. I said, making sure to keep my eyes on her. Why take the name Morning Star if that was my name? That isn't important right now, Shadow. What really matters is that you are about to die. You're weak right now, and your magic is, <laughs> well, cute, but not strong. You're going to need my help if you want to survive. She said, turning and walking towards me again. I think I'd rather die than take your help. I said. Anger bubbling to the front of my mind. The scene changed around us, putting us in the raider camp. She sighed and moved, getting face to face with me. Listen to me. Forget what I said before. I've been trapped in your head for a long time, and only recently have been able to break free and experience more than just a dark cage. I was angry, and I still am, but right now my own survival rests on you. You can't tell me that you want to die just to keep me from taking over your mind. I don't even know who you are or what you want. For all I know, you're just some crazy part of me, my mind breaking from a lack of sleep or exposure to radiation. If it makes you feel better, I'll just give you a bit of my power. I'm not strong enough yet to do much more than that anyway. Take my deal and I'll help you survive and leave your mind intact. She said her eyes inches from mine. I could see a slight glow in them, like embers from a dying flame lived behind them. She was right. I didn't want to die. I had so much I had to find out and make up for. I also had promises to keep. I couldn't let my fear of this creature keep me from doing that. With a sigh of my own, I said, Fine, but only for a moment, and don't kill anyone from the rangers, or next time I will let myself die taking you with me. A smile came to her lips, and then she said sweetly, Deal. Oh, and I should warn you, this might hurt. A lot. The world I was in vanished, and I was back, watching as the griffin thrusted the spear down towards me. Without thinking, my body moved, and the spear buried itself into my already damaged shoulder only hitting the meat. The pain, however, was only small compared to the screaming pain in my head and horn. I screamed as the pain in my head intensified, as if magic was building up behind my horn and the back of my mind. The griffin on top of me smiled as I screamed. Then his face went from glee to confusion as he looked down at my wound. Following his gaze, I saw that I was no longer bleeding. Instead, a bright white light was blurring out of it. The light moved and surrounded my body. Then it blasted outward towards the griffin and threw him off me. What the fuck? What was that? He said, holding his spear up ready to attack me again. 
I felt a presence in the back of my mind come forward and take me over. I felt a hoof rise and point at the griffin. Only it wasn't a hoof. At least it didn't look like it was. It was white, not black. And then I spoke. Only it wasn't me doing the talking. If you put down your spear, I might let you live as a cripple out of mercy. Why should I? You're nothing but a shit-faced shrimp wanting to die, he said and jumped towards me. In a flash of red light, I teleported behind him. I'll say it again. Put down the spear. This is my last warning. Fuck you, bitch, he said, twisting around, bringing his long spear into an arc. The spear stopped an inch away from my eye, the blade held in my magical field. He pulled on it, but it wouldn't budge. His eyes grew big as he asked, What the fuck are you? I'm your worst nightmare come to life, I said, pulling the spear out of his talons, turning it around in my magic and slicing through the air. It connected with his chest. He was jumping back, but the spear was able to leave a deep gash. I slashed again, jumping forward, slicing into the muscle near the base of his wings. He screamed as he fell, one of his wings falling uselessly next to him. Blood was pooling under him from the deep cuts. I flipped the spear back around and stabbed it through his gut, pinning him to the ground. He yelled again in pain as I used my magic to slowly twist the blade around inside of him. At least it felt like me doing it, but I wasn't controlling the actions themselves. Whatever Morning Star had done to me, she had some sort of control over my magic and movement, even my speech. There was an ear-splitting scream from overhead as two griffins came diving down from one of the cliffs, one yelling, Father, no! Stay back, Sin! The griffin on the ground yelled. The smaller female griffin slowed her dive, but the other, a larger male like the one who attacked me, kept going. <laughs> Insolent worm, I heard myself say. A surge of magic blasted out from my horn, enveloping the descending griffin. A scream filled the air as the light of whatever spell I'd used surrounded the griffin. A moment later, a blackened husk fell to the ground, landing dead at my hooves. I looked up at the other flying griffin. Stay out of this unless you want to be next. The one on the ground let out a choking sob. My son, I'll kill you for that, I swear it! I looked back at him and grinned. No, you won't. What you will do is tell the others to leave. Then you'll die. And if you don't, before you die from your injuries, then you'll get the other flyer up there to do it. You bitch! Screamed the female griffin, diving towards us now. Another spell flew from my horn. Only this time, instead of killing this one, it froze her in place. I looked deep into the eyes of the dying griffin on the ground. Last chance, little kitty bird. Do it. Or the other one dies too. Tears fell from his eyes as he finally spoke. Fine! Fall back! That wasn't so hard, now was it? He looked up at me and closed his eyes. I did what you told me to do. Now let my daughter go and kill me like you said you would do. A grin pulled at my lips as I looked up at the griffin still being held in the air by the spell. No. I think I'll kill her, too. No! I yelled inside my own head. I could feel the spell ready to release, and I was doing all I could to stop it. Don't interfere. This is what you wanted. You wanted to live. This is what has to be done. The voice of Morningstar exclaimed. I won't let you do this. We're safe now, I said. The deal is over. Now go back and give me control. Never! She yelled using my own lips to speak still. The griffin looked up at me like I was crazy, and at the moment I kind of was. I won't let you kill another. There's a better way, I said, using all my strength to take control of my magic. I could feel her holding onto three spells, one holding the spear and the griffin, another holding the griffin in place, the last holding the spell that she used before to kill the other griffin. With all my will, I took over the one holding the spear in place. I pulled it from the griffin's gut. Turned it around and stabbed myself. The monster that called herself Morningstar and I both screamed in pain and rage. She lost control of my body, and I took over, turning my head as the spell wore off. 
with a shot high into the sky, blasting a hole into the clouds. My body fell to the ground as I felt pain everywhere. I lifted one hoof and saw that it was black again. The presence of Morning Star was no longer there. I sighed, then looked over at the griffin on the ground. Using a hoof, I lifted a healing potion out of my saddlebag and tossed it over to him. It landed next to his head. The other griffin landed next to him and took it, lifting it to his beak. He looked over at me, ignoring his daughter, and asked weakly, Why? Whatever that was that attacked you and killed your son there? Wasn't me. Seeing, though, how you were trying to kill me yourself, I figure we're even. Drink the potion or don't. I don't care anymore. I said, my voice only a whisper. I was so damn tired. All I wanted to do was sleep. He drank the potion and said, No. What I meant was, why save me? Because it's the right thing to do. Just don't try and kill me, please. I said as my vision started to fade. There was the sound of steel rangers walking up behind me, as, and Paladin Stock said in his deep voice, Your friends just took off. Two of your comrades are dead. I suggest you leave here before you join them. The griffin stood weakly. Our fight here is done. I can see that. Before I go, answer me one thing, if you would. She won't be doing anything like that. She's badly hurt and in need of medical attention, Scribe Hazel said, walking up to me and looking down at me. Ignoring her, I said, Only if you tell me something. Agreed, he replied. What do you want to know? Why did you take the contract from the Overmare? A smile came to his face. We have a code in the Talons. The Red Talons will only take a contract for a bounty, if the pony the bounty on is deserving of it. You broke into her stable, stole that pit buck from her safe, then left with the files that could put her stable in danger. My question is to you. Why are you surprised that we came after you? If you stole something from a stable, you should have known there would be repercussions. I could only laugh, then moan in pain. Scrub Hazel put a hoof to my side and said, Don't move. It's okay. Then she looked back at the griffin. The information you have on Shadowstar is wrong. I'd give you a better account of what really happened, but there isn't time. Send an emissary to the bunker tomorrow, and we'll have a full report on the truth ready for you. For now, we need to get out of here and make sure she doesn't die. Can you put off your contract until then? The griffin looked over at the dead body of his son, then back to us and nodded. I can for now but I'll be expecting payment for the loss of my griffins and son. Agreed. Agreed, the paladin said as he walked up to the griffin. I was lost at this point, or maybe it was the loss of blood. I could see a lot of it on the ground next to me. What I did to myself was stupid, but it seemed like the only thing that I could do at the time. I looked up at Hazel and smiled. Thanks for helping me, but I think I'm going to sleep now. I'm so... tired. Shadow, you can't go to sleep. You've lost a lot of blood. If you do, you might not wake up, she said, looking worried and fishing in her saddlebags for a healing potion. In response, I let out a weak laugh and closed my eyes, the sounds around me slowly fading away. Footnote. Level up. New perk added. Lone Trotter, rank 1. Who needs friends anyway? When adventuring without a companion, you take 10% less damage, and carrying weight increases by 50. Quest perk added. Mysterious Pony. A mysterious pony has shown up to save the day. Who is he? Why does he help? Who cares? The mysterious pony will occasionally appear in sats to lend a hoof with deadly efficiency.